Also, we will our friend Yitzchak, Yitzi, for Fuash Lema, and also for Fuash Lema, for Chaim Pinchas Tzvi, Hirsch Ben Minka, Betoch Shal Cholam Yisrael. Smiling, a boy side. Ben So, a boy side. wrote in the Torah Dosha by Moshe Rabenu. Moshe. He said, "Im bechukotai telechu, if you're gonna go by my rules, ve'et mitzvotai tishmeru, and you're gonna watch my mitzvot, make my mitzvot, va'asitem otam, and also you're gonna make them. Don't watch them in your safe. Watch them to make them. Like someone told me that he is making mitzvot tefillin, la'niach tefillin." He's putting his tefillin in the closet. <laughs> he done that. He's putting them over the... Are you telling the Sadducees? I can see the Sadducees doing that. <laughs> so if you're going to do what I command you to do, the rain going to come in the time, like we said, you are giving their food, their needs, when they need it. It's a huge chizuk for confidence in Hashem in Barach, in Parnassah, in Emunah. That the Parnassah is going to come on the moment that you're going to need it. You're afraid now what's going to be in the end of the month. But in the end of the month, Borah I'm going to give you what you need to have in the end of the month. You have to have that confidence to be sure. In that fact that for sure, Borah I'm going to supply you all of your needs when you're going to need them. What, you need that it's going to lie in your bank account, that everything, you're going to be relaxed? It means that you doesn't have faith. The Parnassah, you need it in the 30th day to the month, in the first day to the next month, or something like that. Borei Olam, you need to believe that you're going to give us the Parnassah in that day. And not to be stressed in no other day before. It doesn't take to get the Parnassah 30 days. Borei Olam is giving the Parnassah. The reason that we need to work is because we have Avonot. And Avonot, we need to have Yisurim to, to, to get forgiveness. This is why we need to suffer all month working. But the Parnassah, Borolam is giving the Parnassah. Mm. There is no connection. So why there is a connection? Why still the Parnassah is coming from our job? Why we become to be fresh after that we're sleeping? For the free choice. Borolam attach those two things together that after you're eating, you feel strong, you feel awake. After you're sleeping, you're sober, you're happy. After you're working, you have your parnasa. It's two different things. But Borolam connect them together that we're going to have the free choice if to believe that He is the one that is giving all of that chiyut and all of that shefa parnasa to us. Oh, that we are achieving it because that we're working, because that we're eating. Person can see that sometimes he's eating and he's falling to sleep after that. It doesn't give him power. So how can you say that the eating is giving you power? Sometimes it takes your power. You're working and it's giving parnasa. You see a lot of people working a whole month and after it they don't have parnasa. A lot of debts, a lot of problems. Person can work. Rav Shalom said that once, that one time someone came to him and told him if he wants to work when he was Chiloni, if he wants to work with him um, in uh, picking watermelons, Liktof <laughs> Avatichim. It was a good income, yeah. good parnasa. He said, yes, I want to. And he and his cousin, if I'm not mistaken, was working for that person for hours, on hours, on hours. When they finished, Loading all of his truck, he turned on the switch of his car and ran away. Oh. Uh, Shalom and his cousin were standing like that, <laughs> wet, <laughs> sweating. <laughs> no income. Wow. The avodah, the job, the suffering is because of the avonot. 
and the parnasa is coming because of Borei Olam. Borei Olam is giving you the parnasa. So if we don't have avonot, parnasa comes with the parnasa. Exactly. If a person doesn't have avonot, the parnasa is going to fly like a bird for him. And we know that the reason that you have from him. What? You have from him. No, everything that he needs is going to come to his hands without an avonot. How are we going to reach that level that we don't have avonot? If we're stuck in so many avonot and we don't know how to climb out from all of the darkness, by doing tshuva. Tshuva, mechaperet et avonot. Tshuva is bringing forgiveness. Why did, if that's the case, why don't we all just run into tshuva? Get it over with and have the pronouncer come down like, like that. Mm. It's a good question. Okay, let's go. Okay. All right. Benatati gishmechem beitam. I'm going to give you the rain in their time, and it's written in the Gemara Gdosha that in the time of the rain, afilu pruta shebakis mitbarechet, even a penny that you have in your pocket, getting blessed, it got more bracha, like you have a lot of coins in your pocket. So it's all of the parnasa, not only for someone that has got fields, that he needs, actually he needs water. All of the parnasa. Venatna aretz yevula, ve'etz asadeh, ten period, the fruits, everything. Amazing thing. Now Rashi is saying, it's very nice to read. We're gonna soon gonna read more wonderful things that Borolam is giving. But Rashi is, Rashi is show, illuminating our eyes with, with something very important. Rashi is saying, Im the first, the, fir, the beginning of the first verse. If you're gonna listen to my rules, if you're gonna go in the path of my rules, Yachol zek yuma mitzvot, can it be that Borei Olam is talking about the mitzvot? It cannot be. Why? Kshehu omer vet mitzvotai tishmoru, are kiyum ha mitzvot amur. In the next part of the verse he is saying vet mitzvotai tishmoru. So what it means in bechukotai telechu? That we need to go in the rules of Borei Olam. It's not the mitzvot. Because in the second part of the verse he is already saying again. He is saying vet mitzvotai tishmoru. You need to make the mitzvot. So what are those rules that Borolam is talking in the beginning? Uh, she is saying, Hama ani mekayem im bechukotai. So what we're going to learn from im bechukotai telechu? Telchu shetiyu amelim batorah. That you're going to put your effort in limud Torah, in learning Torah kedusha. There is burden in this world. There is amal. Adam le'amal yulad. Person going to suffer in this world. There is nothing to change it. It's reality. You're going to suffer. It's going to be 100 kilograms every day. It's going to be two hours of suffering every day. Something, everyone with his story, with his life story, with his avonot, with his mistakes, with his things that he needs to take care of, to fix. Everyone going to do something. You are the one that's going to choose in what you're going to put your effort. If a person putting his effort in the limud, he will not put effort in other things like Shlom Bayi, like uh, running after Panasa, like educate your kids. It will not be a burden. It's not going to be heavy. Why? Because you put already your effort in Limud Torah. If when you're coming to the Yeshiva, you're going to put your effort in learning, means that you're not going to talk while the Chavruta, while you're learning, you're going to concentrate. Every second, you're not going to waste your time in the sandwich bar, coffee shop, like Aram Shalom said. We need to put a sign from the sandwich bar over there. That you're going to know what you're doing. That you're not going to think that you're in a break. There's no break. Rambam is saying if a person is breaking his Torah, all of his Torah is Kraim Kraim. Kraim Kraim. Like the, all of the Torah is ripped person is stopping his Limud Torah in the middle, he's tearing pages from his book. Every day that you're learning Torah, you're writing a book. You're writing a book. And if you're tearing parts and you're, you're cutting with nonsense, with shtuyot, with talking, things that are not important, you think that they are important, check yourself. If really you are sitting to learn Torah Kedosha, check every second. Use that time. If you're going to use that time like you should, at evening you won't have troubles. 
You will not have to, to be awake until 12 o'clock, listen and listen, and conversations and problems, and another electric bill, and another water, water bill, and I don't know what. You don't need all of those suffering. And you will not gonna hear bad news and, and, and khadashot, what's going on. All of that, it's misery, it's, it's suffering. You will not have to have that. You will not have to have that. Why? Because you suffered already. You suffered in Limud Torah. Don't talk between the shiurim. Don't talk, of course, not to talk while the shiur. Don't talk while the shiur. Don't talk about nonsense, about shriyot, things that you have. You want to say, Rabbi Nuhin Likutei Morani is saying, when a person always wants to talk, wants to reveal his heart all of the time, it's a sav. It's the desire of a sav. It's the a sav. He's got fire inside of himself and he doesn't know how to take it out and he wants to be important, he wants to be a chidush, he wants to be a tzaddik, so all of the time he's saying what he's got to say. His chidushim, his news, his opinion. Who cares about your opinion? <laughs> Who asked you? If you have the desire to say, if it's for the limud, if this is how you're learning, if you have something wise you want to add, you want, it's wonderful, it's the best, this is how you learn. You're showing the, you're revealing the Torah Gdosha. This is what we're here for, to reveal the will of Hashem Barach. This is what we're looking for. But if now you want to reveal yourself, you want to show that you understood, you want to show that you're right, you want to show that you make it, you made it, that this is Esav. This is Esav. Esav, he was sitting in Bet Midrash. Esav, he had a beard, he had peot, he had everything. He was the son of Yitzchak. Yitzchak thought he was a Talmud Chacham. He asked Yitzchak how to make myself from the salt. He was inside the sugiyot. He was inside the sugiyot. Can be a sav sitting in a bet midrash. A sav he doesn't have to be a goy. A sav can sit in a bet midrash and learn Torah, mamash, in sirut nefesh. Why? Because he wants honor. Because he wants success. He wants to be called a rabbi. He wants to have something, to achieve something in life. What do you want to achieve? What are you missing? You have Bora Olam. What do you miss when we have Bora Olam? You have everything. What do you miss? The only missing that you have is that you don't have faith. That you don't believe that Bora Olam is with you. When Bora Olam is with you, you don't lack of nothing. Of nothing. Yesterday I gave shiur in Batyam. Someone came to the shiur, person totally broke. The first sad person after giving up thousands of time in his life. He was learning in yeshiva, he was married, now he's divorced. He told me, how am I going to be happy? He said, dead said, he doesn't have no reason to live. He's saying, tell me the truth. Why should I be happy in this world? And he's totally serious. What is so good in this world? So I told him, I was davening first. I felt that it's a strong question. I was davening, give me siyata nishmaya, let me help that person, Bezat Hashem. I started to answer to him. I told him, you know, the story about Yosef HaTzadik, he was suffering a lot, but he was happy. After I finished all of that story, he told me, what is the connection? <laughs> Yosef HaTzadik, he was the son of Yaakov Avinu. He was an angel. We know that Yosef HaTzadik, he was an angel. He was pure. He was a holy person. He had a huge connection with Bora Olam. Who are we that you're comparing between me and Yosef HaTzadik? Mm -hmm. He was suffering, but he had the vessels to suffer. I don't have those tools. I don't know how to deal with my life. What is the connection between me and Yosef HaTzadik? <laughs> <laughs> this is when I said thank you to Bora Olam that I was praying before. <laughs> and then I told him, you're right. Let's talk about Avraham Avinu. And then we were talking about Avraham Avinu. He told me, Avraham Avinu, you're talking about the one that he was the best. I told him, no, no, no. We're not talking about Avraham Avinu when he finished. We're talking about Avraham Avinu when he started. Avraham Avinu, when he started, he was the son of the worst wizard, Mechashef, the worst person that was in that world, in this world, in that generation. His father was selling Avodah Zarah, he was the Mechashef, the most wicked person in the kingdom of the king Nimrod. That Nimrod was the strongest, the biggest kofer of them all, and he was his spiritual side. He was his spiritual dark, awful side, the father of Avraham Avinu. And he didn't like Nimrod. He wanted to conquer the world himself. 
So what he done? He found in the stars with all of his tricks and magics, which gonna be the worst day of them all. The hardest day, the day with the most dinim, hardest day of them all. And in that day, he came to be with his wife, when his wife, she was a nida. In the, in the most strong day of her nida, means the day that is the worst to be with the wife, chas shalom. And he came to her in that day. And why he done all of that with all of his kishufim and all of his magics, dark awful magics, why? Because he wanted to bring the worst person of them all to the world. A person that's gonna win Nimrod, that's gonna beat Nimrod. Beat Nimrod. And Bore Olam transferred it and brought Abraham Avinu. So Abraham Avinu came from Tumat Nida, from a Goy, from the worst, in the worst day of them all, with the worst thoughts and meanings that a person can have when he's with his wife. With the meaning to bring an awful creature to the world. And Bore Olam turned it all upside down and brought Abraham Avinu into the world. And Abraham Avinu in Mesirut Nefesh is serving Bore Olam. So this is more like us. We don't have those horrible conditions of Abraham Avinu. We have wonderful conditions. Even if we are Gerim, even if you are, the per you are a Goy, that you were a Goy that made Giyur, your parents were not even close to the parents of Terah, of, of Abraham Avinu. Not even close. So, person like us, that is very, very far from the Kedusha, it doesn't mean that he cannot climb and rise to very, very high levels. This is why all of the world is called after Abraham. Abraham, in the beginning, he was Av Aram. He was the father of Aram. But after it, when he became to be Abraham, when Borolam added the letter Hey to his name, and he became to be Abraham, so it's, he became to be Av Lekol Olam to all of the nations. It means that all of the nations can be like Abraham Avinu. To the level of Abraham Avinu, everyone can reach. You want to say that to the level of Moshe Rabbeinu, you cannot reach. All right, let's say. Also on that, I disagree. It's written, I told you that story once, that there is a Midrash. There is a Midrash. And in the Midrash, the Midrash is saying that there was a king. And that king, he had advisors. And those advisors... They were smart in the wisdom of the face, to know, to recognize the face of the person. And he, that king, believed in Moshe Rabbeinu. He heard about the miracles of Moshe Rabbeinu. And he said that he wants to see what the advisors are going to say about his face. He sent the, the painters. They made a um, uh, portrait. Portrait. portrait of Moshe Rabbeinu. And they brought it to the advisors. The advisors looked at it. And they said, we're sorry to say, but that person, it's a Midrash. That person is the worst person of them all. He's a murderer, he's got a ni'uf, he's a thief, he's violent, it's, a, it's a, a vicious person, the worst person, he's a liar, everything. And he told them, how can it be? Maybe it's a mistake, maybe you, the painters painted the, another person, maybe it's a mistake, 100%. He said, I need to go to talk to Moshe Rabbeinu. And he went, he had an appointment with Moshe Rabbeinu, met Moshe Rabbeinu, told him, listen, Moshe, I'm sorry. I believe in you. I saw the miracles that you done for Am Israel in Egypt. I saw you open the sea. You got the Torah Kedosha. I believe in you. But I have a question. My advisors, they never were wrong. Never in their life. Always 100%. Every expl explanation that they gave me on every person, it was 100%. But on you, they told me the opposite of you. You have mercy, you love everyone, you're generous, you're good, you're doing wonders. But they said the opposite. How can it be? So Moshe Rabbeinu answered to that king and he told him, they were not wrong. The truth is that this is me. In the source, in the beginning, with my nature, this is my nature. All of those horrible midot, this is me. But I was working on myself and I broke all of them. Until that now I'm a tzaddik gamu. And I'm totally clean and I'm not sinning at all. And I'm doing what I should. And I'm good. But I was totally bad in my beginning. And this is us. This is the chizuk. Why we should be happy? The question why you should be happy? You should be happy that with all of your lackings, 
with all of that wonderful distance that you have from Hashem Itbarach, Hashem Itbarach is not leaving you for a second. Hashem is taking care of you every second, every moment. Like Yov asked ask Borei Olam, how can it be Borei Olam that you making so many horrible things for me in my life that I'm a tzaddik? I'm serving you like I should. I never sinned in my life. Doing everything. He was Tzadik Amur. And why all of those horrible things happening to me? Maybe you mistake between Iyov to Oyev. Maybe you think that I'm Oyev, an enemy. Maybe you think I'm your enemy. Maybe you mistake in the name. Instead of thinking about Iyov, you're thinking about me as your enemy. About your Oyev. Iyov and Oyev. Same letters. But was Iyov an advisor to Paro? Yes. But we saw that actually, the, the, also by the Gemara Kedusha, and I heard it from Rav Shalom, that actually in the end, the conclusion was that Iyov, he, it, it, there is a story about Rabbi Yochanan, it's too complex to get inside, but actually it's not, it's not that thing that, that we know. I'm going to explain a little bit. We know about Rabbi Yochanan in the Gemara Kedusha, if I'm not mistaken, Blinedel, that Rabbi Yochanan, he had ten boys that died. And about, the, about Rabbi Yochanan, we asked why it happened to him. Because nothing happened to him, actually. There is all of that story of, of helping him to, to, to come out from his bed when he was ill. And, there is a, a, a long story over there, and in the end, the conclusion is that he didn't do nothing. So why actually he suffered so much? So because he was Gilgul of Eov. Because he was Gilgul of Eov. Because of that, Borelon punished him. This is how I remember it, Blineder. So actually, Eov, from that you can understand that Eov didn't pay on his sin. If now someone else in another Gilgul that actually it's him gonna pay, so Yav actually didn't pay. So if he was suffering and he didn't pay on his mistake, so it means that he was paying on something else. On what? We don't have nothing. So he was suffering, so to speak, with no reason. It's an argument, it's a svara. It's a svara. There is a side to say that Iyov haven't done nothing. You saw that he paid in a different generation. Mm. So actually Iyov, when he's looking at himself and he's checking himself, and actually we saw also in the verses, you can see that over there, look at us. So many averot, so many mistakes, so many horrible things inside of our lives, and we're not paying like Iyov paid. You see that Borolam was very strict with Iyov, very strong with Iyov. So Iyov, he had his side to ask Borolam, maybe it's a mistake. What Borolam answered to Iyov? Sarai Shivu. Borolam answered to him, I'm watching on every hair that you have in your head, in your beard, in your body, on every hair that it will not um, grow from two hairs from one yeah. root. Because if there are going to be two hairs that are growing from one root, a person is going to lose his eyesight, the power of vision. So, Borolam, what he answered to you? He answered to you, I'm watching on every hair in your head. You're thinking that maybe I'm mistake in your name? Of course not. If Borolam is watching on every hair that we have in our eyebrows, so, can it be that he's doing bigger mistakes than that? This is the, 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 this is the reason why a person has to be happy. A person has to understand that Borei Olam is checking every, every detail in your life. Every situation in your life, Borei Olam is checking it. And he's doing the minimum, the minimum, the minimum that you can suffer. And the rest that Tzadikim are taking on their backs. And they're suffering because they know that you don't have the power. And Rabbeinu said, I took on myself all of the extra weight that you can suffer. And the rest, what you can suffer, you're going to suffer. But the rest, I took it, accept it on myself. And Rabbeinu said on himself that he was suffering, and all of the tzaddikim, in all of the generations, they are suffering a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. And Rabbeinu said that he have suffering 
so much, he was suffering so much that if we would put a stick of wood in his mouth, he can break it because of the pain that he was having so much. And also he said that if he wants to stop it, all of that suffering, he can stop it in a minute. He's suffering because he wants to suffer. He's accepting those suffering for Am Israel because they cannot stand what they deserve. And the tzaddikim are accepting them that on themselves. This is why when a person has got problem in his life, he doesn't need to look at the problem itself. He needs to look surround it on the rest of the things. Yet Sarah is taking a bad thing and incre increasing it. Increasing it. He's doing it huge. Look. You're not married. What are you going to do? How are you going to deal with your life? You don't have kids. How are you going to manage? Huh? And he's doing that problem. It's a problem. All right? It's a problem. But he's taking that problem and magnifying it. Doing it huge. And the person is staying, standing, terrifying. What am I going to do? How am I going to look in 20 years, in 30 years? Who said that in 20 years you're going to be in the same condition? You are in that condition now. We agree on that. Now you have a problem. You're not married today. You have a problem. Okay. But who said that tomorrow you're not going to be married? No one said that. It's not a problem. You need two witnesses and a rabbi to be married. You don't need even a minion. A wife. A wife. No, no, rabbi. You don't understand. The wife is not a problem. <laughs> you are the problem. You don't need a wife. <laughs> the fact that you're looking when the wife is going to come, this is your mistake. This is why she's not coming. It's scary. The problem is inside. The problem of the person is inside. You have a problem. You need to fix that problem. The problem is that you are not ready to receive that wife. You don't have the vessels to receive her, to hug her, to be with her, to love her, to support her, to be there for her. Look at yourself in all of the tests that Borolam put you in. If you're going to check yourself, you can say, now I'm ready to get married, maybe. But two years ago, Baruch Hashem, that I wasn't married. I know that two years ago, I didn't have the vessels to take that responsibility on myself, right? So, sure. how you know that now, you're not in the same condition because you think that you're ready. Borolam doesn't think that you're ready. If Borolam was thinking that you are ready, he would bring your wife. She was knocking at your door. Harav Shalom said, I was davening when I was a guy, when I was Bachur, still not married. I was davening daily on my Shiduch. And every time that a person came to me and offered me a Shiduch, I was telling him, no, I'm sorry. I told him, why? He said, no, my shiduch, she's going to come to the yeshiva. I don't need to do no effort. I don't need to go to shiduchim. And he said, you, of course, you're going to think that I'm crazy. Davening on shiduchim, davening on my wife, and not going to shiduchim. <laughs> there is options, there is hatsaot, and they're not going. What's going on? And he said, I knew that Boreh Olam going to send my wife when it's going to be the time for me to get married. And I was davening and davening and davening that Boreh Olam going to gonna make me to be ready, gonna help me to do tshuva, gonna make me the, the person that, that have those powers to take the responsibility of, of creating a house, supporting another person, listen to another person, feel another person, really to be sensitive, to feel her needs. She's got a lot of needs, a lot of worries, a lot of thoughts, a lot of fears, a lot of situations, a lot of stress. You need to be there for her. You want to marry her and that she's going to be for you? So you need to find a husband. You don't need to find a wife. <laughs> You're living in an illusion. <laughs> so, the thing is that we need to be happy with what? Like I told you, I asked Karab Shalom, with what Yosef HaTzadik was happy? With what? Because of what he was so happy? He was dancing and smiling and clapping. And why? Because there is a shame. You, Arab Shalom answered, because there is Hashem. When there is Hashem, it doesn't matter if you're succeeding, if you're suffering, if you're climbing, if you're falling. For the person that wants to serve Bore Olam, there is no falling. Bore Olam contains everything. Bore Olam is not in the world. The world is in Hashem Itbarach. Bore Olam, he is Mekomo Shel Olam. He is the place that the world is inside of him, inside of Bore Olam somewhere. 
So you're covered with Bore Olam. All of the lackings that you have, it's lacking of wisdom. You lack of wisdom of faith. You don't believe that this is the best. Rabbi Yosef Voltoch, one of the biggest Sadiqi Mistarim of the old generation, huge, 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 huge. He didn't have boys. A lot of Sadiqim didn't have boys. You feel that you must have boys. Why you feel that? Because you don't understand that Borei Olam, he understands that now it's better for you without them. Now you can make tests, you can succeed in your life, you can progress a lot more than if you had kids. It could be worse if you had kids. You don't accept that. You don't accept the supervision, the decisions of Borei Olam. You don't have faith that Borei Olam is all good. You have Lashon Ara inside your brain that is talking about Borei Olam all of the time. The snake is whispering all of the time that you can be bigger than Borei Olam. It's craziness that you can be huge, that you can be as him, that he is wrong, that you are right, that you are more than tzaddik than Borei Olam, that you know best. There was one, one tzaddik that they asked him, if you were Borei Olam, what were you doing in the world? He said exactly the same. And actually, it, none, none of us would say that answer, I'm sorry to say. But actually, this is the only right answer. If you would answer any other answer, it, it was totally wrong. It was a horrible answer. Borolam, he knows best. We're not, we don't know best. We don't know nothing. We don't know how much we wait. We don't know nothing. We don't know who we are. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Do you know who are you? You know if you're Israel, you know if you're Kohen, you know if you're Levi. You know that? <laughs> you know if you're Israel, you know if you're Levi, you know if you're Kohen. You don't know who are you. You know well, who is your neshama. You don't know. You don't know who are you. Harav Berland said once that in this world you have your wife, you have your kids, you have your parents. In the world to come you're going to see that your wife actually in the soul she is your father. And this is why you had so many difficulties with her as a wife. And your kids actually they are your, I don't know what, one of your daughter she is your wife actually in, 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 in the shiduchim in heaven in the mating in heaven, in the, in the neshamot, in the source. It's totally different. Someone, you love him. With someone else, you have problems, you can't stand him. And you're looking at it and you say, I'm crazy that I hate him, he's, he's sweet. Everything is good with him and you can't stand him. When he's laughing, when he's smiling, you cannot sit close to him. Why? Because you don't know who are you and you don't know who he is. You don't know nothing. And faith is starting when it's darkness. Faith is starting when you don't know. When you know, it's daytime. Wonderful, this is the A. It's illuminating, you can see things, you know. This is the sun. But when it's time of night, time of darkness, it's time of faith. The faith is in the night. In the night, you don't know. In the night, you count on Borei Olam. And Borei Olam done, he gave us a, a, a huge present in this generation, in this world, that even the days become to be like night. That it's all darkness outside. That you don't know nothing. And here we need to trust on Hashem Barach. This is our test. This is our mission in this world. To believe in Bore Olam. To know that it's all Him. And to know that He is good. And then you can tell that it's all for a good reason. This is it. To make the mitzvot, all of the mitzvot, we got them from Borei Olam as an advice. It's good advice. The Zohar Kadosh is explaining that the mitzvot are called itin. Itin, itin, it's called itin. Itin, it's advice. It's itin. Itin de Kedusha. It means etzah. Itin de Kedusha. It's etzah. It's advice. It's an advice from Borei Olam. Advice, it's not the tachlit, it's not the purpose, an advice, when you're getting an advice, when you want to get to the purpose, to something, when you want to achieve something. What is the thing that we're trying to achieve? This is the faith. That all of the mitzvot, all of the mitzvot, he established them on one. What is that one? This is the faith. And what is that one that he established on it? It's a leg. It's one leg. When we have one leg, when we're davening, 
When we're standing Shmona Yisre, we need to put both of our hands, legs together. And you're standing on one leg that is straight. Emuna Yeshara, you have one faith. You believe in one, you are one with Borei Olam. You're standing on one that is the faith. You're standing on the faith. You're not standing on your bank account and on your income. You're not standing on that. You're not lying on that, leaning on that. You're leaning on Borei Olam. In Him, on Him we're standing. Where is He? Spiritually. Yes, exactly. This is the difference between a Goy to Am Yisrael. This is the unique thing in Am Yisrael. That we're going after Borei Olam even when it's darkness. Even when it's darkness. This is exactly what Am Yisrael is supposed to do. To believe in Hashem Barach when it's darkness. When it's light, when everything is, is illuminating. It's not a Chidush to believe in Hashem. This is why it's written that when Mashiach is going to come, we're not accepting more Gerim. We're not receiving Gerim, accepting Gerim to Am Yisrael when Mashiach is going to be here. It's not, a, it's not a Chidush that uh, someone wants to be a Jew when Mashiach is going to come. When Mashiach is going to be the king of all of the world and all of the na nations are, are, are surrendering to Am Yisrael. Now you want to be a Jew. It's not a, it's not a Chidush. We're not receiving, no, we're not accepting. It it's not a challenge. But when a person sees Am Israel that they're suffering and they have hard time, and even though they are putting all of their effort in the Torah Gdosha, like that Rashi said, in Bechukotai Telechu, it means to put the effort, you are Melim Torah. And we're putting the effort in the Torah Gdosha, and then he wants to join them. Then we're accepting him. Then he's worthy to become to be a Jew. He become to be worthy to be Yehudi. To be part of Am Israel means to be part of Hashem Barach. When you're learning Torah in Mesirut Nefesh, Rabbeinu explaining the 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 the, the, the verse Likva uh, Itim um, La Torah, and it says uh, that the person have to 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 establish establish time for Limuda Torah Likva. Rabbeinu is saying a different perush for that. Usually people understand that they need to have a shiur, a daily shiur. Every day, dafayomi. Every day coming to the yeshiva in the morning until one, until three, until five. This is kviut, that it's established, that it's daily. But Rabbeinu is saying there is a different verse. There is another verse. The verse is saying, vekava et kovehem nafesh. That bore olam, he is... Um, su suing Tovea, suing them, the ones, the nations that were robbing Am Israel, that they're going to pay back Nefesh. Even nefesh, it means mm, spirit, it means, or the money that it contains, Nefesh, or, <coughs> or souls. But Borei Olam is using the word Kava et Kov Ehem. He is suing them on their gzelot, on their things that they stolen from us. So actually the word kava, it means that Borolam gonna take from them back, means that he is taking what they took. So the word and he's using the word kava, kava it kovehem. So the word keva suddenly from that verse by that explanation it's got a different meaning. It means ligzol, to take to take something. And this is the explanation of that verse that we're saying, Likvoa itim la Torah. You need to steal time for the Torah. It's not daily that you need to have a shiur. It's also good, it's also important. But there is also another explanation. You need to steal from your free time, from the time that you have, another minute, another 10 minutes, another half an hour. You have to steal it. There is Yetzirah that is stopping us from learning. And we need to steal another half an hour, another 30 seconds. There was one of the tzaddikim that he said that he finished the Navi a lot of times in his life by reading one verse a day. He didn't have time. He was running for Am Israel all of the time, Tzorket Tzibur, and every day he was learning only one verse of Nevi'im. And he finished the Nevi'im a lot of times in his life like that. We don't know how. One, one verse in Nevi'im, how much time it takes a day. In the beginning, what we were talking about, you are already in the yeshiva, and you have time to talk so much, so much talking, that it's not Torah Gdosha. 
all of the time and other nonsense, and other shtuyot, and other idea, and other chidush, and other, it's all kishkushim. You're missing the point. The Yetzirah had jumped with you into Moshcheu Lebet HaMidrash. Mamash, you pulled him back inside to the Bet HaMidrash. He's with you, totally. It's wrong. When you're getting inside to the Bet HaMidrash, you have to leave him outside. Leave him outside. And now you're learning Torah Akdasha. You're coming at nine, Rav Shalom said, about a, a, a Khatam Sofer. That a Khatam Sofer said, why they chose me to be the Gdol Ador? There was huge people in that generation. He said that about himself. Because I was coming 10 minutes earlier to the Bet Midrash. Just because of that. Not because he was wiser, wiser not because he was holier, not <coughs> because he was coming 10 minutes before of everyone to the Bet Midrash. 10 minutes! By 10 minutes you can be dog Gdol Ador. By 10 minutes of Limud Torah you can be Gdol Ador. If you have time, free time, open a book. If in your free time you're not opening a book, after it, when you're going to want to open the book, they will not let you. Only when a person is making the Torah Akdosha from his poverty, they're going to let him make it from his wealth, with Ashirut. When you have time and you don't open the books, you show to Borei Olam, I don't want to learn Torah. And then when you're going to say, I want to learn Torah, they're going to tell you, no, you don't. And you won't. This is why we need to have Mesirut Nefesh. And Rashi is saying another thing, amazing, amazing thing. Mitzvotai Tishmoru, and the other part of the verse, Ve'et mit, Mitzvotai Tishmoru, and keep the mitzvot. Rashi is saying on that, Hevu amelim batorah. Why are you going to put the effort on the Torah that we said before? Im bechukotai tilechu, it means that you're going to put the effort in the Torah. Why are you putting the effort in the Torah, Gdosha? Al menat lishmor ulekayem to keep it and to make it just to learn it's nothing it can be shedin yudayin it can be a Jewish demon sitting in the yeshiva that esav that we were talking about sitting in the yeshiva from the morning until the evening maybe he's got also kol el chatzot and he's a demon he's a rasha merusha he doesn't like Am Israel he doesn't love Am Israel once Rav Shalom said. One tzaddik, he was putting all of his effort in the Torah Akdoshah. One tzaddik was running after Pidyon Shvuim. One tzaddik was davening all day long. All of the tzaddikim, each and every tzaddik, he's got his own point of, of serving Hashem in Barach in Mesirut Nefesh. There is one thing that is gathering, bonding all of the tzaddikim. It's Ahavat Israel. You cannot be a tzaddik without Ahavat Israel. But you can learn Torah without Ahavat Israel very easily. You can learn Torah and Mesirut Nefesh without Ahavat Israel. And then you're not going to be a tzaddik. You're going to be Rasha Merusha, Rasha Birshut HaTorah, Naval Birshut HaTorah. You find your, 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 your tricks in the Torah Akdosha. And you're using the Torah Akdosha to sin. And we don't need to go to rabbis in Oklahoma that I don't know what they're doing over there. We need to talk about ourselves. About ourselves. If when you're coming to your house, and you're rebuking your wife that she's not making the Torah like she should, and you're insulting her because of the wisdom that you, a stupid person, learned in the yeshiva, you are a criminal, you are poshea, you are naval birshut Torah. If you come into your house and you're insulting your wife that she is not holy, that she is not modest, and you think that you are an angel, so you are rasha merusha. You are rasha merusha. I am rasha merusha. Rasha merusha. Rasha merusha. How can you hurt a person? You learn Torah, and the thing that you took with it is the power to insult a Jew, your wife, your gentle wife, your miskena, poor wife. After all of the day that she's suffering with her troubles that she's got, with kids, without kids, with her feel, imagination, far from kedusha, far from, from happiness, far from being rich, from having her parnasa like she wants. All of the time phone calls and bills and troubles and parents and sisters and friends and I don't know, neighbors. And, and she all of the day she's suffering and you're coming from the yeshiva and she you want her to be modest and you want her to be this and you're 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 rasha merusha it's cruel it's a person that is a rasha the torah adam every adam every person the torah is a person every person we're not talking about someone else i'm learning about myself i'm learning this truth about myself I rebuke myself in this shiur to go to in my house and to be gentle, to be a human being. 
to be polite, to love my kids, to love my wife, not that to love Hashem and the day is not going to bother me to serve Hashem in my Mesirut Nefesh. It's not Mesirut Nefesh. You're breaking the rules of the Torah Kedosha. The Torah Kedosha has been given to Am Israel that Am Israel is going to sit and build houses and going to make Shlom Bait and going to have educated kids and that they're going to go to the Talmud Torah and they're all going to smile and that they're going to eat together in the holidays and gonna sit and sing Zmirot Shabbat. This is why Borolam gave the Torah. The Torah, like Rashi is saying to us, Evu amelim batorah, put your effort in the Torah Kedoshah, al menat lishmor ulekayem, to keep the rules of the Torah Kedoshah. Not the rules of your craziness that you decide that this is the Torah Kedoshah. Like Rav Shalom told me that. You want to be strict, be strict to yourself. Don't be strict to someone else. You want to be strict? You want to be modest? Be modest. Why are you going and talking? Oh, it's so because you want to talk, not because you want to be modest. If you wanted to be modest, you would hide in yourself. You were embarrassing yourself that you need to talk to someone else. You would see a lacking in someone else, you would do tshuva on that, like Rabbi Zusha. Rabbi Zusha was coming to places, he saw people sinning, he was starting crying to Hashem to do tshuva on his avonot, a person that is totally clean, clean like heaven, clean. And he's doing shuva, crying, I was with Anida, I was with this, I done that. He never done nothing. But it's not an option for him that if he sees someone else, he's going to blame him on that. For sure, Borolam is telling that about me. For sure. You never seen, maybe in a different Gilgul, maybe in a different lifetime, I don't know. If Borolam you show me someone that was with Anida, I have to do shuva on that. What is my job? To rebuke him, to fight with him. And those people, when they were hearing him doing tshuva, crying on their avonot, they were doing tshuva also yeah. because of him. They said it's a holy person, it's Ish Kadosh. It's Ish Kadosh. He knows everything about us. He was not talking about them, he was doing tshuva on himself. Like Rav Shalom said, you want to help other people to do tshuva? Do tshuva. Do tshuva yourself, do tshuva. Thank you. Thank you.